Yidashimase. Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot'em Up Saturday, and on the menu this Saturday, we have EDF, Earth Defense Force, classic early 90s shoot'em up goodness. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. From developer Jalico, EDF released to arcades in 1991. It would see a release on the Super Famicom as Super EDF in the same year, and on the Super Nintendo the following year. So, it's definitely a product of the time. A very typical horizontal scrolling shooter, but it does have a couple systems that I think are really neat and helps it stand above some of the other titles that came out around the same time. Between the arcade version, which is the release we're looking at today, the arcade archive release specifically, and the Super Nintendo version, I do prefer the arcade release. However, if you're interested in just playing the Super Nintendo version, if you have Nintendo Online Service and uh, the Super NES uh, collection downloaded, then Super EDF is available in that collection, so something that's really neat. Back to the arcade version. Putting credits into the machine, we're taken to this screen here. This is one of the important distinctions between the Super Nintendo version and the arcade version. The arcade version supports two players. The Super Nintendo version only supported one. Starting the game, we see this neat launch sequence of our fighter, the XA-1. And we also have this system, the awesome weapon select system. So the arcade game had four weapons to choose between, the Vulcan, the Laser, the Atomic, and the Hobing. There were eight weapons in the Super EDF release, so that is a, one favor in the Super Nintendo releases, ver, or that is one point in the Super Nintendo releases favor. So we've launched our fighter, the XA-1, built by the EDF to battle the Azuma Empire, a mysterious force that's attacking Earth. Definitely a perfect role for an Earth Defense Force fighter to engage in. So, as far as controls are concerned, EDF is relatively straightforward and basic. We have the ability to move around the screen, we have the ability to shoot, and there's also a third uh, button that we have access to. Our formation button. You can change the formation of your options that are around the ship, or rather attached to the ship. Your default formation is option, or not option, union. In union, the options are attached to the ship, providing much greater firepower than you would normally get in the other modes. Change the mode to your other available mode at the beginning of the game, and we've got the options rotating around our ship in the rolling formation. This provides expanded firepower as far as our range, but our shots are weaker. How do we get additional formations? Well, if you look in the bottom left of the screen, you'll see that there's a level bar with a progress indicator, or rather a level number, with a progress bar next to it. As we defeat enemies and gain points, that bar's progress continues to increase and we'll ultimately be able to level up. We start at level 1, and bam, there we go. We're now at level 2. We can go all the way to level 5. As you level up, the weapons gain additional strength, and we also unlock additional formation modes. At level 3, we unlock Shadow, which is similar to the original um, formation that the Gradius options take around your ship. Um, basically following the ship. And then at level 5, the ultimate level, you also gain the very powerful homing um, formation where the options will actually home in on the enemies and deal damage very, very directly to them as if they were attached to the enemy ships. Now the effectiveness of all those will depend on what weapon you're using as all four weapons have a very unique uh, elements to them. So for most of the game I do actually prefer the Vulcan as it deals, although the individual shots aren't particularly powerful themselves, it's able to deal quite a bit of damage quite quickly. As you saw there we actually took down the first stage boss easily um, using some of the other weapons that would have taken a lot longer. So after you defeat a, a boss you're taken to this stage or this um, 
tally screen here, and you can also change your weapon. So we'll move one up and try out the laser. So the second stage is one that I really like the art of. Uh, more the um, Super Nintendo version than the arcade version, as I just love that night cityscape. Although it is pretty neat in uh, the arcade version as well, I do feel it's a little bit uh, more futuristic and it's not quite as... Uh, I don't feel it's quite as like visually appealing to be honest. Um, but one of the interesting uh, distinctions between the Super Nintendo version and the arcade version, I feel like the Super Nintendo actually did the backgrounds for the stages better. Uh, whereas the arcade version did the um, sprites for all the individual enemies better. The sprites were larger and had more detail. So uh, a little bit of give and take uh, depending on what you're looking for from the gameplay. So a couple things I haven't talked about. So instead of employing a life system, uh, EDF uses a shield system. And those shields are displayed under, in the arcade version at least, under the player number and the player score. So you start out with a certain uh, default amount depending on what the machine would happen to be set for or, or what you've set your options for. And should you run out of all your shields, you will need to continue. So one thing that's really neat about the continue system in both versions of the game is unlike a lot of shoot 'em ups where you lose your progress of your weaponry and that sort of thing when you continue, in EDF you maintain your weapon level when you continue. That's just a really neat touch that I can't state how awesome it is. So this particular um, carrier that just flew past is actually one of the big differences between the Super Nintendo version and uh, the arcade version. In the Super Nintendo version, this ship is not here, so we're, we're seeing stuff that's uh, very specific to the arcade release. So as I was like uh, saying with like uh, the whole um, leveling up and then if we die, we can still continue with the same strength. That's uh, one of the things that I really feel does give the arcade version like uh, some serious uh, props. In addition to that, should we have to continue again, um, we're starting from where we die rather than um, being reset to the beginning of the stage, which is what the Super Nintendo version did making that version significantly more difficult when compared to the original release. So here's our second stage boss. I really like the general kind of like uh, mech vibe that this boss has. Also having that uh, nuclear symbol on like uh, the back of the, its uh, thrusters. Just a nice little touch. So for the most part, I feel like the bosses are relatively straightforward and easy to learn all the way up to the final boss where things do get a bit more difficult. So if you were looking for a challenge, but one that could ultimately be fair, I feel like uh, attempting to 1cc uh, the arcade version of EDF would definitely be doable. Um, I'm not so sure about the Super Nintendo version, there's just some parts of it that get frustrating. One thing that is frustrating, the hitbox is fairly large on uh, the ship, um, which is, you know, typical enough of the era, but there are some sections, specifically in the Super NES version towards the end of the game, where it feels very much like a bullet hell, and you just don't have the ability to easily dodge the enemy shots the way that you really need to. Just something that like uh, can get frustrating. Moving on to the third stage, I think we've uh, definitely seen enough to get a pretty good idea of the gameplay we have here with Earth Defense Force. So really this is one that uh, I feel is worth your time to play. It's a great example of the era and having the ability 
to play a couple different um, visions of the game, this one and the Super Nintendo one, is a neat experience to have. But as far as um, which ones I feel superior, I would definitely say that um, with the exception of the added uh, weapons options on the Super Nintendo version, this is the superior version of the game. Minus flavors though, the huge hitbox is kind of a drag, especially as we get into later stages and have additional firepower being thrown our way. Uh, there is also a difficulty spike as you get towards later stages in the game, and the lack of a speed up uh, button is also a little bit kind of perplexing that uh, they would not have it in the arcade version but would see fit to add it to the home release. But on the plus flavor, I really love a persistent upgrade system, so having that in this title is a huge, huge plus for me. And then I really like the pixel art on the Super Nintendo version in specific in the background and on the arcade version all the detail you have to the enemy sprites. And then lastly it just has that great early 90s shoot 'em up feel and really in so many ways that is the era of shoot 'em ups I love more than any other so it's for me this is totally my kind of game and I can recommend at least playing both this arcade version and the Super Nintendo version Super EDF. Alright, that'll just about wrap up this week's episode of Shoot'em Up Saturday. As always, I want to thank you so much for joining me this week, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. EDF! EDF! E-D-F.